Good work. Nice to see I haven't lost my intuition for people. Not many would have managed to set out to the Stolen Lands and return with the Stag Lord's head, but I knew you could handle it. You've pulled it off even faster than I expected. Very good. We were short of time, and these months you've won for us proved very useful. Lord Mayor Salemius especially appreciated it, and asked me to give you this little token of gratitude. Congratulations are in order. Today, you'll receive the title of Baron before the High Society of Restov, and even Natala Sertova personally. God's bless her. Tomorrow, you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands if you wish, but this time as a ruler. But matters of state can wait. For now, enjoy this feast in your honor. All the city leaders are here. It's a great opportunity to make some useful connections. Speaking of connections, let me introduce you to Kassil Eldori. He's my adopted son and apprentice. He's a trustworthy man. I'd like to send him with you as an envoy. Yes, yes, you certainly have that right. But tell me, how well do you know Brevoy's history or the current political atmosphere? It won't be an easy explanation. What's now called Brevoy was originally two different countries, Rostland and Isia. Two hundred years ago, they were stuck in constant squabbles. Then, Coral the Conqueror showed up and united the two states into one. Such diplomatic tricks are easy to manage when you have dragons at your disposal. The so-called noble houses of Brevoy, mainly Sertova, Orlovsky, and Lebeda, once ruled over Isia. We, the Aldori, ruled Rostland. The royal house Rogarvia, founded by Coral the Conqueror, forced us into obedience. But two hundred years isn't long enough to make peace with such a troubled history. Even two thousand years wouldn't be enough for us to accept Isian rule. Brevoy is a country held together by a thread, and that thread grows ever weaker. We, the Aldori and the great noble houses, spent 200 years under the rule of invaders, the royal house Rogavia. We plotted, we schemed, we stabbed each other in the back, but open confrontation was out of the question. But a few years ago, house Rogavia disappeared. No one knows how or why, but one day, their manners were just empty. And the force that held Brevoy together, that kept us from a bloody feud, ceased to be. Brevoy is currently ruled by the House Sertova, the former kings of Isia. But their power pales in comparison to that of House Rogarvia when they were here. So now, Sertova and Aldori stand facing each other, staring each other in the eye, waiting for the other to draw their sword. It's an untenable situation. No one wants a civil war that would drown Brevoy in blood, but peace between us is also out of the question. Rostland wants to regain its independence, and we will regain it. The power the Issians hold over us is humiliating and costly, and the Sertovas won't give us our freedom without a fight. That is, unless there is some external power that can force everyone to sit down and talk. Do you see where this is going? The Stolen Lands are disputed territory. Brevoy can't appropriate them without raising protests from each of the neighboring states. However, if some brave people were to found independent states on that land, it would be another matter entirely. My hope is that you and your future neighbors, Baron Hannes Drelev and Captain Mager Varn, will become our allies. But even your neutrality would introduce a powerful counterbalance to the aggression of the noble houses. Maybe, with your help, the inevitable division of Brevoy can occur without too much pain. We hope to get some help from the Maivani Eldori, the descendants of the Sword Lords who have fled from Coral's rage to build a new nation in the south. But the Issians know this well, and are doing everything they can to deny us this help. I won't go into details, 
But if my intelligence is correct, if a civil war starts in Brevoy, Myvan will be too occupied with its own inner troubles to interfere. Restov is a free city, proud of its independence from everyone, including the Aldori Sword Lords. But when it comes to Rostland's liberation, our goals align. This whole plan is our joint creation with Lord Mayor Yosef Selimius. Actually, she could still intervene and disrupt the proceedings. But she's a Sertova. Their games are always complex and multi-layered. They're always looking for ways to turn defeat into victory. If she's decided to allow you to become a Baron, it means she already has some idea of how she can turn it to her benefit. Let's consider how she could do so. Maybe she understands that Rostland will inevitably separate and she doesn't want a war. In that case, new states in the Stolen Lands give the Issians a reason to sit down and talk without losing face. But that's an optimistic view. And truth be told, it doesn't quite match up with what we've come to expect from the Sertovas. The more likely scenario is that Natala wants to win you over to her side. If war breaks out and at least one of you stabs us in the back, Rostland will be surrounded by enemies. That might be enough to bring about our downfall. But you would fall first, and your newly formed states would be left in ruin. The Issians always like to have someone around to pull their chestnuts out of the fire for them. A piece of friendly advice? Don't do business with House Sertovas, no matter what promises they make you. Any deal with the noble houses is a deal with devils. How should I know? We're in the middle of a big game. And today, you move from being merely a piece on the board to being one of the players. I hope you have a better understanding of what's at stake. Of course, Keston gave me a full report. You dealt with the scoundrel perfectly. It would be naive to think that none of your neighbors will try to stick their hands in your affairs. <laughs> Especially that sly fox Irovetti. Enjoy your evening. When you're ready for the official part, come to me.
All according to plan. Will you drink with me? To beauty. It sweetens our happy days and brings solace to our dark and sorrowful ones. But jokes aside, I came to apologize. I know the words I said in our conversation with Lady Aldery might have offended you. But this was not my intention. The lessons life has dealt me were not easy. I've learned to be wary of new acquaintances, which is why I've refused to join your party. I hope you will forgive me for this weakness and for my harsh words. And I hope you will hear me out, for I have something to tell you. How amusing. Usually, those who don't seek affection are the very ones who receive it. Anyway, enough sweet talk. There is something important I wanted to tell you. As it happens, I came across some very valuable information. What brave conqueror of these wild lands wouldn't be intrigued by news of an ancient shrine? Possibly full of great treasures. A place such as this was discovered by my old friends from Kadira, and it just so happens to be located in the lands that today become rightfully yours. My friends lack the courage to enter the shrine and seek the treasure, but what will stop us? We who know the taste of battle and have been singed by the same fire. I'm sure you'd like to finally gain your official title and celebrate your victory. And I don't like noisy parties and ceremonies. Find me when you return to your dominion. I'll rent a house in your capital. We can discuss the details of our expedition there. So long, friend. I'll call you so today, because soon enough, all you'll be hearing is, Your Grace, Your Grace, Your Grace.
So, how do you like our little gathering? I hope you've made some useful connections. Shall we move on to the official proceedings? My apprentice, Cassil Aldori, will go with you, won't he? The emissary of House Sertova? Well, perhaps it's for the best. As they say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Excellent. Stand here. Lords and ladies, today we are here to honor three brave people who have done the impossible. They've tamed the stolen lands. Baron Hannes Drelev, the new master of Glenabon, Captain Mager Varn, the conqueror of Dunsward, and finally, the tamer of the Shrike Hills, who put an end to the atrocities of the Stag Lord's bandits. Step forward. On behalf of the people of the free city of Restov, I confer upon you this noble title. Rise, your grace. Step forward. On behalf of the people of the free city of Restov, I confer upon you this noble title. Rise, your grace. Thank you, Lady Aldori, distinguished guests. It is a great honor for me. It is with the greatest joy that I announce the founding of my barony in Dunsward. It shall be called Varnhold. But I must say that this happy event is not mine to claim alone. The stolen lands would never have yielded to me if it weren't for the valor of my friends and companions. Now I would like to introduce my right hand, a hero without whose help I wouldn't be standing here now. Please, step forward.
I'll go ahead. But, Vaan, my dear friend, would you please be so kind as to explain what devil take you you've been doing? I finance this venture with my own personal funds, not to mention all the effort and time I've invested. And pray tell, what was it all for? For you to assemble the fruits of our labors and pitch the whole lot down the privy? Fruits? I've been busy guarding these fruits from Brevoy's incessant fruit moths. But I'm a baron now. We finally have our own land. For the first time in our lives, we're independent. No one can tell us what to do. And you want to destroy everything we've achieved by inviting spies into our house? Of course! Why not? Please, do come in, eavesdrop, sniff around, take whatever you please. Cephal is generous. He said, make yourself at home. Oh, Asmodeus, please give me the patience to withstand this nonsense, or take my soul already. Barn, what are you saying? What is this independence you speak of? We depend on Restov for literally everything, from the inflow of settlers to the food to feed them. I like Jamandi no more than you do, but it will take us years to free ourselves from her influence. Right now we must bow to our patron, brag about a title we received from her very hands. Listening to you is disgusting. Did we claw away our own piece of land, only to keep toiling away for all those... Ah, friend! You're right on time. Come, be our arbiter. At issue is the fact that Jumandi Aldori has generously offered to make other use of her envoy. And who is Jumandi Aldori? The very same one who created our barony, and who could make it disappear with a flick of her finger. An insignificant figure in the grand scheme of things, no doubt. But good Vaughn refused her. And to top it all off, he rather suggestively hinted that he considers every single one of Brevoy's diplomats to be spies. What else should I consider them? Cephal, have you grown foggy in your old age? I can hardly recognize you. You've always been a hardliner. You've always put the interests of our ventures above everything else. And now you want us to roll over on our backs for the Aldori, wiggle our tails, and wait to be petted. We're an independent state now, and we shall have it known to all that we won't be ordered about. Magar, Magar, of course they're spies. You refuse the spy in plain sight. Congratulations, well done. Now the Sword Lords will send other spies, ones we won't even be able to see. Restov has invested a great deal in our barony, and is ready to invest yet more. So why bite the hand that feeds us before the feeding is over? We could at least pretend to be humble, so long as we're still getting something for it. Well, for one thing, that's low. By accepting Restov's handouts, we're taking on certain obligations. I know you don't care a fig for morality, but think of our reputation. Who will want to deal with us if we steal from our employers and stab them in the back? Why do you keep saying us and our? Do I need to remind you that you're a badder now? That is the difference between you and me. You were born of a noble family, and yet even now, after receiving lands and power, you continue to think like the leader of a band of thugs. I, 
My parents plowed the soil, and I learned to read by moonlight. But even as a snot-nosed child, I tried to think like a ruler, a king without a kingdom. After decades, my plans and schemes are finally bearing fruit. I shall not allow you to destroy everything we've created with your stupid bride. It won't be my hot temper that ruins us. It'll be your cunning and greed. In any game, the most important thing to know is when it's time to take your winnings and walk away. But that's where you're so wrong. Do you imagine this is a table we can get up from? No. A mercenary commander can pocket some loot and move to the other side of the continent. In becoming a baron, you've got yourself into a long, long game. You cannot simply leave it. But if you play it well, your children and grandchildren may get a turn. All right, enough arguing. What is done cannot be undone. You spoiled my game quite a bit, Magar, and I will not forget it in a hurry. We shall try to play with the hand we were dealt. Celebrations are over. It's time for everyday life. I suggest we exchange bows with the respected hosts and set off to Varnhold. We have much work to do. Victory! The Stag Lord's dead, and the capital of the new barony has been built in place of his fort. That was how the long and challenging Taming of the Stolen Lands began.
have a moment?
You asked if we'd meet again, and here I am. I see your fate has changed since last we met. Now you are the ruler who will determine the destiny of these lands. I am their living heart, the whisper of the wind, the strength of rivers, the luxuriant growth of the meadows. Do you wish to touch this power? I will show you a place where we can finally meet in flesh, you and I. Deep in the woods, there is an old mossy ruins long abandoned, nearly swallowed by the thicket. There is an old tree growing among the stones in the yard, which I remember as a seed shadow under its green crown I call my verdant chambers. Visit me there, my lord, and come alone. A nymph's reward awaits you. Forgive me, nymphs are not made for cities. The noise and vanity of human settlements vex me. I will answer all your questions. 
But there, in the silence of my asylum, <laughs> then come to my chamber and be my guest. We'll share stories and laughter, imagine the future, and dream. So long, I will await you there as the ground waits for spring under the heavy winter snow. <laughs> <laughs>